is only war. What is up, gents? 40K Dirtbags here. We are doing a how-to deployment guide. I'm gonna try and make it as easy and simplistic as possible. I do have an army ready to go that I'm kinda gonna show you what my mindset is on how you should be deploying your army, what you should be looking out for. Now, this is gonna be an easy how-to guide. Uh, we will continue this in 10th edition, but I wanted to get this to you as soon as possible because the 9th edition is still here. Uh, we're still in arcs of moment, and we gotta be, I'm sure you guys are gonna be playing a lot more games uh, up into 9th, uh, 10th edition, but also playing RTTs, maybe some GT GTs are coming up. I know I have one RTT next weekend, and then I have a GT the weekend after that, which we're gonna be using, you know, 9th edition. So this hopefully gets to you as soon as possible. If you guys are new to the channel, I appreciate it. Definitely click that subscribe button so these videos actually pop up for you guys. And also if you guys are a Patreon, a shout out to you guys, you guys are fucking awesome. Uh, they provided, you know, the camera, the overhead camera, the microphone, the gimbal that we used in the last video, uh, and the dice, uh, you know, a lot of the Patreons already bought the dice, they get 10% discount, and also the stickers. Those, if you guys are interested, go check out Discord. If you guys are on, Di on, on Discord, go join Discord. So, the whole point of this video is I had a lot of suggestions from you guys on Discord on what you wanna see kind of talked about before 10th edition. I don't wanna to get too much into 10th edition because it's still up in the air. We have no fucking idea how in depth they're gonna change it. Uh, but I am gonna do another, a couple quick how-to guides uh, after this video as well. Kind of like the movement phase, the charge phase. The charge phase is, is huge in general. So that's gonna be a really big video. But with this video, again, I'm gonna try and make it as easy as possible and where I'm gonna kind of be deploying. Uh, this is the Games Workshop setup, so you guys will see in the bottom, I guess to you guys, bottom right hand corner, uh, it's gonna be using this deployment setup from Games Workshop. So it's kind of set up like that, where you got the two little uh, square things in, in the center, the squares along the outside, rectangle, not square, and then the forest along the outside. So that's gonna be the first layout that we're gonna be testing out. We picked the mission where it's just five objectives, you know, one dead center uh, in the center of the board. We have four on the outskirts. They're 10 up, 15 in from the sides. Uh, we use the Games Workshop layout where it's the big L's. So again, uh, a lot of you guys are probably gonna be playing on terrain like this. These ones back here are gonna be the forests. Uh, these ones in the center are going to be ruins. They're line of sight blocking. So if you guys are on the out other side, uh, you won't be able to see through it. And it's ruins usually kind of like different terrain in the center. I didn't want to set it up because I, I want, I'm probably going to be moving over it. <clears throat> and then back here, we got the walls that are bottom floor line of sight blocking the big L's or big U's. Sorry. And there really isn't, there's nothing in these corners. This Games Workshop doesn't like to give us too, too much terrain. But let's get into it. So my list over here. Uh, you guys won't be able to see it, but I'll, I'll give you a, little, a quick uh, tidbit of it. It's going to be two armigers, so we're going to kind of throw everything in here. We got two armigers, we got a play burst crawler, we got two rhinos, we got about four different characters, and then we have uh, three five man plague marines, one 10 man plague marine, one four man death shroud company, one uh, bloat drone, and that's my 2000 point list. So uh, let's go step by step on what we're, what we're trying to do here. We're going to pick a mission. Uh, the one that is going to be the nine inch deployment from the center. So let me set that up for you guys Okay guys pretty standard so we have the nine inch deployment uh, or nine inch from the circle So it's a big circle in the middle you're going to be deploying on one side your opponent's going to be deploying on the other side uh, We obviously are using our new Grey Knight, not Grey Knight, wow, Dirtbag Dice. Uh, so these are the green kind. Uh, you're gonna be able to see it hopefully on the camera when we're recording, but I'm thinking of using the green because they're fucking sick looking. So when you set up, you're gonna be deploying really based off of your secondaries. Now here's an example with Death Guard. They have a couple of good secondaries that you really wanna kinda get, uh, you know, spread, which you wanna get, you know, the center or one of the outskirts pretty, pretty soon. We have uh, fleeing vectors, which I want to kill the enemy opponent uh, and have them flee or run. And also the last ones I want to be in the end game or all over the table by the end of the game. So usually I'll be taking those three or if it's like engage or something like that, uh, that's kind of the goal. So how you're going to be deploying is a lot based off of what your secondaries are specifically. For Grey Knights, uh, you can do something where it's teleport assault, um, purify ritual, and then uh, engage or banners. So one of those things you're going to be taking uh, with Grey Knights where you want to set up kind of de de dependent on your secondaries. That's going to be the first thing, is you want to be deploying depending on your secondaries. Then, depending on the army that you're going against, am I facing an all melee army, am I facing an all shooting army, 
what do I have to hide from uh, and be aware of when I'm deploying? Now you can really win a game uh, with deployment or lose game based off deployment, especially with player place terrain. That's gonna be a whole separate video with player place terrain. But when you guys are setting up a terrain, if it's standard like this, you can actually bring a list specific for the terrain setup. Because if you know it's player place, you might build a little bit different of a list. If you know it's games workshop, you might be running a list like this. Uh, so really that's gonna be, uh, there's so many videos to make, oh my god. All right, so let's get into it. First, we're gonna start off with the Death Guard. Uh, we're gonna be doing, uh, I have one uh, Armager that can be uh, in Deep Strike, so I'm gonna be putting him in Deep Strike, so one of the Armagers is already in Deep Strike. I'm going to be doing a Reserve Unit, which is gonna be one of the five-man Plague Marine units. They're gonna be coming in from Reserves, which is gonna be uh, walking on the side table edges. You can never walk on the opponent's deployment uh, edge, but you can still be within six inches if you're walking in from the side. That's a little, little cheat code or a hack. I'm gonna be uh, deep striking my four Death Shroud Terminators, and I'm gonna be putting a 10-man Plague Marine in Rhino, and two five-man Plague Marines in Rhinos. So that's gonna be my pre-game, uh, and why I do that, uh, let's get into my head, is I have an end game objective. So I want my guys to survive. So I have an option to either bring my guys in turn two from reserves, or I can keep them to at least turn three. Uh, and then if I keep them in turn three, they're probably gonna come down and either shoot something that's in the open or get me uh, on the other side of the table pretty quickly. Death Guard are slow, so I wanna be able to use my reserves to my advantage, so that way I'm gonna be able to spread and get, kind of get all over the board as soon as possible. That could be for really any army that you're playing against. If you're facing an all shooting army and you have a lot of big models, it doesn't hurt putting some of them into reserve, so that way at least if you don't get turn one, you don't die uh, from getting shot on turn one. Same thing goes for Grey Knights. Uh, example is if I have four Dread Knights, Grey Knights have a strat or a thing where you can actually redeploy models into reserves. So if you don't go first, you can then redeploy either moving your, your guys around or kind of putting them into reserves uh, so that way they don't get shot turn one. So that's a really good strategy with Grey Knights, which we'll do a how-to specifically. <laughs> uh, actually, I did one. Go check out the uh, Grey Knight tactics because uh, there's a whole guide on how to deploy uh, Grey Knight units. So with this, uh, some people ask, what do I set up first? What do I set up last? My units that I don't wanna die or I don't want my opponent to know where they're gonna be, maybe they're a really quick unit, maybe they get into the opponent's face, maybe they, stay, uh, they can get across the board and shoot something really quick. I don't want them to know where I'm gonna put that because then they might deploy complete opposite from what they see. So here's an example. This uh, list had some zombies in it. We got our, our whole box of zombies right here. So examples, I would be deploying my zombies first. And the reason I do that is because they're just chaff units. They're kind of just basic dudes that you, you know they're going to die, but they do have a purpose in the list. So if you're playing somebody that has deep strikes or they're gonna come in from reserves, I might use them in my backfield here. Let me change the view. I might use them in the backfield here so that way I can stop coming in from deep strikes. Like even if they're turn one deep strikes, you can put them in the backfield so that way they're stopping nine inches of uh, somebody getting it in, in the back. So this 50 point unit, you can spread them out two inches, which is really far, which is what she said. So you kind of deploy, you know, all the way out to here. So that way they're stopping nine inches of everybody coming in the backfield. So all of this is all blocked out from your opponent. And that's just from a 50 point unit. So it's two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. There's my ten man unit, and they're all within coherency, and they're all blocking out nine inches. So everything from here to here, my hands, is all blocked out just from one unit. All right. Now if they want to shoot at them, they're shooting at them, right? I'm going to try and keep them behind cover as best as I possibly can. But sometimes they're going to get an angle on them, and if they do, hey, no problem. If they shoot my fifty point unit, that's that's fine. Now there's something that I can shoot at in return to potentially get more points than they just got from killing my 50 point uh, zombie unit. So that's gonna be my first thing. Another thing is if you don't, if you know you're gonna have units back here to screen out, then they could be your, your front uh, charge unit. So if I put them behind this wall, all the way up top here, excuse me, all the way up top here, their speed is only four. So you have to know their speed because if you wanna try and get on that center objective, you have to make sure they're at least four inches away. So if I start one guy right on the line here, he's out exposed in the open. But if I get turn one, I'm gonna be able to walk up and spread on the center objective turn one. So that, get, that, same, that same thing goes if your guy is speed six, speed seven, speed eight, whatever it may be, you wanna make sure that they can at least get to what they're trying to do turn one. 
All right, so these guys are speed four. They're walking out. Now, the thing with these guys is they can come back. So if you shoot them, same with cultists. If you shoot them and you don't kill the whole unit, I can spend one CP, make, you know, 66 guys and get back on the objective turn one to then spread it uh, turn one, right? So that is a little, you know, tactic that I usually do when I'm setting up my zombies or somebody that I know is going to get into the center uh, of board area. So that's the center objective. The back objective we already have, and then these two objectives on the outskirts, I have to, I have to figure out how the hell am I gonna contest those or get to those uh, during the game. So for me, I have two rhinos. My one rhino usually is gonna be like behind this wall, so that way he's gonna get a, a huge jump uh, for the guys inside. So the guys inside can move, let's say, speed five, so they move eight inches. So getting out of the rhino, I'm now on the objective. Okay, so even if I don't have zombies, because in this list that I'm playing right now, there's, there's no zombies. Yeah, treat your zombies better, Jerry. Fuck. Okay, so there's no zombies, um, but I have Plague Marines. So I have a five-man unit of Plague Marines in this squad that they can hop out, get on the center objective, spread, and now they're controlling the center objective. So that way if they come out and, and charge them, the whole whoever's charging them is right here. So that way I can send another unit out to kill that unit that charged my unit. So you can keep one guy, Let's say you bring one guy out on the objective right here, just to tow it, and then you line up the rest four of you guys behind this like ruin, so that way they're not going to get a ton of shots on your on your unit. So if I line them up kind of like this, they would have to basically charge to kill these guys. I don't know if if I mean if they send out a three hundred point unit and they shoot everything into this one guy, then yeah, they could probably kill the unit. But let's say they shoot a couple pot shots. They kill the guy that's on the objective. Now they can't see the unit behind the uh, the ruin right here. You have another turn to basically walk up, do an action, or walk up, shoot, and charge on the other side of the road. Okay, so that's that's the thing. Is that's the center objective. A lot of different armies can can do different stuff to try and get the center, and that's the first thing. So next thing is I want to deploy to get on the the outskirts objective. So the next rhino. You can either put right here in this little forest, use that to your advantage, or over here in this forest to, to use that to your advantage. Now, with the forest cover, as long as your vehicle is towing the forest, here's an example. See how it's like barely towing the forest right here? Even if they're shooting at me from anywhere on this side of the rhino, I still get that plus one to my, uh, or their minus one to hit me because I'm in the forest. So that's with vehicles, monsters, uh, infantry, anything that's towing the forest. Now the whole infantry unit has to be in the forest that they're shooting at, or anybody that they line of sight to, if it's going through a forest, that's it. But vehicles, monsters, and big things like that, if they're towing it, you get the minus one to hit. So for here, I'm gonna try and be as far back as I possibly can over here. He does suffer the uh, penalty for moving, the, the infantry does not. But let's say you don't have turn one, they then blow up your rhino. Okay, now my guys get to disembark three inches. So now I'm all the way out to here. And then turn one, I can either move up or advance onto this uh, objective. Or if I do have turn one, I can just advance with my rhino. So he's advancing. Oh, look at that dirt bike dice rolling a six, baby. All right, so he's going 12, 13, 12 plus is 18, minus two is 16. So he's basically advancing all the way out to here just to kind of tow on that objective back here, right? Um, so now next turn, those guys can then pile out into the objective uh, if they blow up my rhino. So that's that's where I would deploy my rhinos is either right here or over here, or you put them on the other side of the wall, which is right here, to try and not get line of sight uh, anything over here. Now, he's not. this ruin is blocking it, so his best line of sight is gonna be probably out to here, and your best thing is gonna be a measuring stick. So if I could put my guy here, and I know one of his dudes, let's say this guy's over here, if that guy right here can move up to here, his best line of sight, right, around this ruin is gonna to be to about right there. All right, so best line of sight is gonna be going that way. So I wanna start my thing right here. And this is all pregame. You can do this before you start. So if that guy deployed over there, you can agree with your opponent hey, do you agree that if you move up your full distance over there, you will not be able to shoot my rhino? They say yes, great, now there's no arguing. 
Turn one, I know my rhino's safe. You can't shoot at least specific, specifically with that unit. If he has another trick to get it out or do all this stuff, that's fine. But if that one guy, if his max threat range is right there, he can't shoot my rhino. So my other rhino is starting over here. Now, if they get out eight, the max for my guys are, are, are eight. So they're gonna get out to right about there. And then they're about, I would say six inches from the objective over there so I can advance or I can just advance my rhino. So he's gonna move up, let's say he goes 12 plus a two on, on the dice. So he's going 14, so he's going up to there. Now next turn I can then get on the objective or fight for the objective or spread or do whatever I gotta do on that rhino. If you guys have jump infantry, Grey Knights, for example. I have a redeployment, but I might start my Grey Knights, jump infantry, same thing. I'm gonna start them in the uh, in the forest, so that, that way if I don't get Linus, or if I don't go turn, uh, first one, first turn, they can shoot me, I get minus one to hit. My uh, infantry moves 10, 12, but 10 because they do suffer the penalty for forest, but at least that 10 inches gets me onto the objective. Turn one, same thing over here. So if I start here, I'm 12 inches away, so I'm not in the forest. So if I start right on the line here outside of the forest, I can then move 12 and get on that objective over here. So my Grey Knights could go objective, 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 and objective. So Grey Knights can actually get four objectives turn one pretty easily. Uh, and then also you can gate somebody off the objective you, that you know is gonna die. Or let's say this unit cast uh, or did their psychic purify ritual, you can then gate of affinity them into the room behind cover. So now that, that way they're safe. Or if you have a unit going to the center, you can then gate them back to safety. All right? there's a lot of tactics in that video that I posted. Uh, about two weeks ago. All right, so that's that. So let's go back to the deployment for the Death Guard. I have five unit uh, in there. I have five unit in reserves. I have my 10 man, which is probably gonna be starting right here. Um, so my first deployment uh, won't be these rhinos because I don't want them to see where I want them to go. So first deployment is going to be this character. So Tally Man, he doesn't really do too much uh, besides he buffs a unit for plus one to hit, uh, but I know that he's gonna be buffing my, uh, this guy, the uh, bulk height dude. So he's gonna be buffing him. So he only has to be within six inches uh, of that guy uh, and he gives him exploding six to fully rescue him. So I'm gonna put my Tally Man pretty safe in the back here, uh, right there. So that's gonna be my first drop, all right? If I don't have zombies, I'm dropping that guy. He's then gonna drop. I then get to choose again. I'm gonna do my Ballas Putrefier, who is gonna be buffing a shit ton of guys. He's gonna go right in front of him, all right? His goal of the, of the list is gonna be fighting in this area right here. So he's gonna be giving out buffs, putting out a Arch Contaminator on people, putting out the mortal wounds on people. Uh, so my main units are gonna be in this deployment or in this area most of the game, fighting for this objective and that objective. So he's gonna be able to get anywhere he has to go from right here to kind of get up to the wall over there. Next is going to be Typhus. He's going to be kind of in the middle uh, behind the Rhino. Now, if I'm going to put a Rhino right here, I want to make sure I have enough room to put the Rhino. So you can measure it out beforehand. Like, all right, that's going to be my proxy. My, my Typhus is going to be one inch away from the wall, right about there. And he's character protected from the Rhino. So that's uh, Typhus. Then I'm going to put my uh, Contented Dread, who isn't going to have a ton of line of sight on this deployment. So I don't really care where he's going to be deployed turn one because he's not going to get a lot of shots off turn one because if the opponent's good with his deployment, I'm going to be kind of like, fuck, I don't really know where to go. So he's going to wait to see where they either get deployed or where they move. So he's going to be able to go here because he's going to either move up this way and shoot down that line, or he's going to move this way and shoot down that line and that line. So putting him right dead in the center, right about there, he's not going to get shot from either direction and he's going to be able to move out that way and shoot, or he's going to move back this way and shoot. All right, so two different fire lanes with that guy. Malignant Playcaster, another thing that you can put down pretty early. You put him like right in the center. Now all these guys are gonna be character protected once everything's down. Uh, then we have five man unit reserves, two five mans in the Rhino, one 10 man in the Rhino. We have these guys deep striking this, this thing. Uh, it's tall enough to be over five inches. Let's see how tall he is. So this guy's right under five inches. So if you're playing Games Workshop Terrain and you agree that if you set this guy up, and he's under uh, under five inches, he won't be able to be visibly seen. Now, some places play true line of sight. So if you're towing the, the building and it's uh, and you can physically see the model, you can then shoot the model. So this guy you have to be pretty careful with because he's pretty tall. I'm gonna be putting him back here. So that way he can't get line of sight. Actually, that's my, where my Ryan is going. <laughs> so I'm gonna be putting him back here. So that way turn one, he can either hop up 
to be behind this wall, or you can hop over here or hop over there depending on where the opponent goes. But I don't want to get him shot turn one uh, because he is uh, a huge part of this list because he does a shit ton of attacks uh, and he can heroic six inches uh, if needed. So then we can start putting our rhinos down. So this one rhino is going to go where we said it was going to be. So the way turn one, I can get on the objective. This other rhino is going to be right where we said it was going to be, to be over here. So that way he doesn't have a line of sight to go in this way. Uh, and there's no really line of sight coming in from the other side. Then we have our Plague Burst Crawler. Plague Burst Crawler can shoot fucking anywhere, but he probably has enough units down that now I can see where he's going to be deploying. Is he going mo mo mainly on this side of the board or is he going mainly on that side of the board? So the Plague Burst Crawler, same thing with the uh, Volkite, is I can either move up this way and shoot those vectors or I can move back this way and shoot these vectors. So Plague Burst Crawler doesn't need line of sight to shoot most of the time, like the big bombs, but the other things he does. So he wants to be able to see what he's actually shooting at to not uh, suffer the penalty. Then we have one more drop, this guy, uh, the Armager. And if you're playing Grey Knights, these guys are probably going to be in reserve, so that way they can walk on turn one. I already have one in Deep Strike, the other one has to start on the board. So he shoots fucking 60 inches. I'm putting my Armager as far back as I possibly can, and try not to get line of sight on anything. If he has something that can shoot equally as far, we're going to at least shoot him turn one. I'm going to try and put him closer towards the wall. But if, if you don't really care and they, and they don't really have any <laughs> any way they can shoot this far, you're putting them all the way back here. So that way, same thing. Line of sight that way. Line of sight this way. Vector, vector, vector. So you can also walk up to here because he's speed 12. Walk up, tow this part of the ruin. So that way, all of this part of the ruin, he sees through. That's how the, the ruins work. So all of this from here all the way up to there, he can see through. All right, cool. Let's try to pick it back up. So, Beyonce walked in, gave me something, or yelled at me, one of those two things. All right, so we were talking about the Armager. Armager can literally see anything on this uh, other side as long as he's towing here and he speaks 12, so you have plenty of room. So that's kind of how my deployment's going to be. I don't have a ton of units in this list. This isn't a normal Death Guard list. This is the one that number one player Death Guard, uh, number one player in the world Death Guard is using, so I'm kind of testing out to see if it is fun. Um, so yeah, so that would be my deployment. Now, what is going to be shot turn one? Uh, this guy, most likely not going to be shot. Anything over here, most likely not going to be shot. Everybody in the ruin, most likely not going to be shot. Um, and that's basically it. That guy's in deep strike, those guys are in deep strike, and this five-man unit's in reserves. So that's going really against a shooting army. Now let's switch it up and kind of going against a melee army. So I don't want to be one inch away or one inch near the wall. So I'm going to be one inch back away from the wall, so that way his units can't assault me through the wall. So I'm not sure if they're going to be changing that in 10th edition, but for now, you have to make sure whatever tournament that you're going to, whatever uh, buildings that you're using, you have to both agree or figure out if you're playing that one inch rule or not. Now what I mean is like they can't fit a base within one inch of the wall without being in the wall and you can't do that. So I'm going to be starting, starting this guy one inch away from the wall, Typhus is going to be one inch away from the wall, Playcaster one inch away from the wall, <laughs> this guy one inch away from the wall, and you're basically blocking out the melee threat that's going to be trying to get to you turn one. So if you're playing uh, Blood Angels and they have the Death Company, they can basically charge 24 inches. Sometimes you're going to be using your, your zombies to block out like a little bubble around your, your units that you don't want to die. So that way they can't be shot at and then they can only be charged, uh, they're only charging the zombies. So that way you have everybody else to kind of come out and kill the Death Company. Uh, most of the time, if you don't have that, you're going to be starting basically 32 inches away from the Death Company. So if they're starting 9 inches back there, you're starting your entire army right about here. So everything from here back is where you're gonna be starting your army because most of the time Blood Angels aren't gonna have a ton of shooting. They're mainly gonna be a lot of melee. So turn one, you're gonna be spending running to this basically objective if you have first. If they are first, you're gonna be defensive and they're gonna start spreading out, but you're at least not gonna die from the death company or get, you know, charged and, and killed and kind of like if he charges your unit and then spreads out you're basically stuck in your deployment zone but if you're starting from here back you can then kind of spread out uh and get to the spots that you really want to get to because he's not going to be able to charge you turn one now if he doesn't charge you turn one great he, he still has that unit you're going to run up block him out so he can't charge the ruins and stuff like that so that is what you're doing against the shooting army that's what you're doing against the melee army 
All right, so here's an example of a little bit different of a list. Uh, it's got a lot more infantry. Uh, we took out the armorers, so the armorers can either go into reserves or they're just not going to start on the table. But we have our zombies basically up here, but protecting from the front row, so that way if they charge in, they're going to have to kill the zombies. They can't shoot the zombies because they're behind the wall. Then we have a couple Death Shroud Terminators, which are giving bodyguard, but they're basically behind uh, everything back here. If you don't want to deep strike them, or if you have one unit deep strike, one unit um, behind your army. We have two Plague Rose Crawlers. They're both behind the Ruin. So that way they can't see them unless they get a line of sight going basically all the way out to here. So unless they can get a, a unit or a model to here, they're not going to be able to shoot my Plague Burst Crawler. Same thing going over here. They'd have to get somebody all the way on the other side of that forest over there to shoot my Plague Burst Crawler. So making sure that you have the vectors and you're, and you're agreeing with the opponent that nobody can see them turn one um, is going to be the whole goal. The two uh, dr dreads, the one um, Contemptor Dread and then the one uh, Blow Drone are still behind the wall. Because, again, if they hop into here, they're going to be able to be seen because he, he's pretty tall. But the Contemptor Dread wouldn't be able to be seen. But I still want to have those two vectors to be able to shoot. I basically put as many pox walk or Plague Marines as I possibly could fit in the ruin. Uh, we still let, are pretending that there's two five mans in here. Um, the other ten men, I only brought one Rhino. Then we have five, ten, fifteen in the ruin. And then we have one five man back here and one five man back here. All right, so mostly everything is... Hidden, all the characters are protected in a little bubble in here, and that's going to be your main uh, death guard standoff <laughs> right in the center uh, of the uh, the building. So not a lot of shots, not a lot of vectors, and if they want to charge, they're going to be able to, to charge and kill some zombies, which again, you don't really care because then you can just walk around or walk through uh, and then kill whatever charge. So that is a, a quick overview of how you're going to be setting and kind of the mindset of where you're going to be deploying units. So this goes for any army that you're really playing. Any army that I play, I use the same tactics, the same ideas, pre-game uh, moving, pre-game determination, agreeing with the opponent, having the laser is gonna be key, uh, and having um, bases uh, maybe the same size. I have a Dreadnought, Dreadnought base that I have as a proxy. So that way turn one, if I wanna move him up and kind of measure to see that I can get to that unit, it, it works vice versa. So if you wanna try and be aggressive, you wanna make sure that you have line of sight to their unit, do you agree? I agree, great, I can at least shoot them turn one if I have first, or vice versa, where if you put your, your dread here, you say, all right, if you go over there, can you see my dread? They say, no, great, you both agree, there's no arguing turn one. If they say, oh, now I can see him, well, sir, you cheated, you moved a little bit further <laughs> than you said you were, uh, so no, you can't, you can't shoot me, because you both agreed uh, beforehand, and. Stick to your ground, don't, don't let them uh, do it because you both agreed. So if that's the case, they can see you, they either move too far, just say, all right, I'm gonna scoot this guy back a, a, a hair because you, you said you, didn't, you weren't supposed to see him. So that's supposed to be a gentleman agreement uh, before you start the game. That's my deployment, guys. Hopefully that helps you out. Uh, again, a lot more tactical videos are coming up on the channel, so make sure you guys are hitting the subscribe button. Uh, and if you guys want to join, my, my cousin Bill's here, so we're about to get a game going. Uh, so if you guys want to join Patreon, definitely appreciate you guys for doing that. Uh, and Discord, there's a lot of shit happening on Discord, and also there's a lot of shit for sale as well. We got a ton of the uh, dirt bag dice. Hopefully this isn't too shiny. Um, we got the orange, the green, the blue, and the silver. Uh, and then we got the marble dice which if you guys see me at any i uh, can't really see it but if it's got it's marble it's a limited edition dice if you guys see me at any rtt's uh, gt's and you mention that you're a dirtbag i will give you one of these dice for playing me or at least just meeting me so that is kind of little thing uh, i'm trying to do and also stickers they're fucking legit stickers there's one from every single uh, army that i posted uh the terrain is going to be coming out from 36 wargaming so if you guys are interested in that uh we're going to have a link uh which is going to be posted on all the upcoming videos so if you guys want to get some new um, objective markers, it's going to be any army that I have uh, custom, any color of the 40k dirt bags uh, on there as well. So you get to customize them for whatever armies you play, or if you just want all one of the same army, you can do that as well. So guys, appreciate it. Thanks for clicking on the video. Again, a lot more going to be coming. Make sure you're putting suggestions in Discord, and we'll see you in another video soon.